morning from uh, wherever you are. My name is Tuvark. I am uh, your host today from the Emerging Business Side, which is a task force of futurists. And uh, today we're going to talk about cutting through the metaverse side. Before going there, I'd like to give you a little bit uh, information about your host. Futurist is a digital innovation consultancy. Uh, roots are in Finland, started in Helsinki. Also, uh, for a long time, we have been in Tampere, but we are a European uh, digital innovation consultancy with offices in Stockholm, Berlin, Munich, Stuttgart, and London. And uh, what we do is we basically uh, use technology, data, um, design, strategy, and culture in order to create digital products and services that uh, our clients offer to their end users. And we are a family of companies. We have Columbia Road, uh, which is an e-commerce and growth hacking company, Meltlake, a Microsoft specialist consultancy, Thrive, a freelance network, and uh, recordly business uh, data uh, company. 600 people from diverse backgrounds and uh, with 20 years of consecutive growth. And uh, me, I represent the emerging business department, which is uh, practically your host today. And emerging business um, is where we basically look into what futurists is and futurists clients are not working on. This could be from a time horizon point of view. So what is up and coming in the next two, three years? But also it could be a domain point of view, which is something actually heated as a topic today. And it's a complementary to what our organization do. And we bring that knowledge uh, to our organization and to our client organization. You are at one of our community sessions because we have a community, both internals and externals join in. Um, where we, every other Friday, talk about some of the, the upcoming trends, some of the work we have been doing, and um, interesting, um, relevant um, topics uh, around technology, design, data, and, and business. If you'd like to be part of it uh, on a more uh, permanent or longer term, please reach me out through the event page um, through here in the, in the chat, and I will add you to our emailing list where you could get more regular updates on these events and things that we are talking about. I am going to hand it over to uh, Melanie. She's a colleague of mine. She's an experienced design leader, and then she's part of the German leadership team and drives strategic development and daily operations in, in German market. She has wide variety of experiences in different industries. Her focus really is combining strategy, design, data, and technology to build these meaningful experiences. So I can't think of any better person to moderate this discussion. I'm super delighted to introduce two of our speakers today who will cutting through the metaverse hype for us. On the one hand, we have Vesa Apro, which is a creative technologist from ILI Innovation, Finland's national public uh, broadcasting company. And Vesa will actually share with us today how ILI already adapt, is adapting technologies to create more immersive experiences and he also shares with us some insights specifically on the topic 3D journalism and what can already be done today on the journey towards the metaverse. Our second amazing speaker is Adam Sotler. He's our global head of strategy and culture at Futurist. And Adam will provide us with a perspective on what the metaverse developments actually mean for businesses and organizations and how the continual development of the metaverse will require leaders to reassess and to reimagine future pathways to align with this immersive, virtual and blended uh, competitive space. The metaverse is communicated as the future of the internet, where animated avatars of our physical selves, different ones, will be able to virtually have all sorts of interactions from shopping, meetings to traveling. Some experts say it will still be a decade or longer before technologies have caught up with the current hype. Nevertheless, the big ones, Facebook, Google, uh, uh, Microsoft, they are racing to build the metaverse. So is this just a thing for the tech giants or do we all need to prepare? Interesting question to begin with, I guess. Um... Maybe one way to start is there is no kind of one all encompassing definition of what this metaverse is. And I guess there's, and in that sense, it's quite hard to give a straight answer. But one way we tend to think about it is a future state that is in development. 
and that future state is of this kind of merged virtual augmented physical reality and it's kind of blurring that line between sort of the interactions of online uh, and real life this is very much therefore very all-encompassing um and i like your question about building the the metaverse because i mean ultimately it really depends on the version of what those players that you spoke about what what version they're hoping to actually create the one that's often referred to is this kind of decentralized version right so web 3.0 very much a metaverse and an advanced state with infinite world um, and key to that is kind of interoperability and so those players that you mentioned the likes of google microsoft is going they're going to play a big role in determining if that's a success or not because they have such influence over it but there's other factors at play as well because obviously you know core to the metaverse is going to be uh, UGC, user generated content, even from individual uh, developers and content creators to the gaming community. Um, so tech therefore becomes this kind of vehicle for creativity in, in hoping that this, this world evolves. Um, so aside from those players that you mentioned, you know, it's important to also recognize others that are going to be at the forefront. So everyone from NetEase in China, Unity, uh, Roblox, and, uh, and Epic Games, which many of you are obviously very familiar with. It's also interesting to think about the numbers and the sizes that have been spoken about. Many will know of Kathy Wood from ARK Invest, who were talking about it being a very much multi trillion dollar market. But one of the kind of real thought leaders in this space, uh, Matthew Ball, who's in, in a VC world, speaks about it in the next 15 years, you're looking about $30 trillion in, in value that's going to be uh, generated. So in that um, sense, this is very much all encompassing and hence why many other companies companies are jumping on board. So whether it be Procter & Gamble or Knight, they're all actively exploring and, and experimenting in, in this world. Um, so in that sense, it's something that everyone's going to have to um, not only uh, participate in, but understand what, what is their role and what contribution they want to make to this kind of future. The term doesn't re really refer to one specific type of technology, but rather a broad shift in how we interact with technology what different interaction and dynamics do you foresee in, in this uh, future of different interactions with technology, Lisa? Adam mentioned about the decentralization and network structure. I think that's the essence. For users, it might be that the, the interactions and dynamics are not that different than what we are experiencing at the moment. Of course, as technology evolves, it's going to be more immersive. Pokemon Go is a good example of what's happening here. I kind of see for the user, it, they don't need to know the word metaverse in their daily lives. Where do you see the actual potentials and business opportunities for organization within the metaverse, Adam? Again, I, I, I'm going to refer to that kind of future state, which majority talk about right so this in, in a much more advanced and mature state so if we if we assume that is is where we're heading then we're talking about systemic change right this is something uh, that will have immense impact on uh, business and society it's therefore forcing companies to not only imagine their role in in that reality but also their continuation in the physical world right so we can expect that this metaverse is going to produce the same extent or diversity of opportunity that we've seen with just the internet itself, right, over its over its period of time. The new companies going to be created, new products and services are all going to emerge from everything from payment processing to ad delivery to content creation. But it's a worrying time for, for many organizations because you could argue many incumbents that are at play today in the, in the physical world are, are also set to fall because of the result of this, this change. But again, it's, this is something that's in development. So there's not so much that we can actually, we can only really speculate. Things that we're actually seeing at the moment so those kind of near in business models that are perhaps at play many are aware of that the increase in the in the um, purchase of nfts and that's obviously at play the sale of goods continues to happen uh, not only in the metaverse but uh, purchasing there to have have in the physical reality immense opportunity from an advertising perspective as well as um, games and immersive experiences but because of the nature and the extent of the of the change that's at play i think um even if it is that far away, I think the, the side of the byproduct or side effect of all this is going to also be at a bare minimum, a, similar to COVID is going to be a further accelerator of, of change to organizations to ultimately speed up their kind of route towards a much more digitally oriented organization. Because not only if, if you're going to continue to seek relevancy in that future, 
So that also in, um, pushes your your uh, agenda forward today. Going back to your question, it's immense opportunities, but again, it's it's not, we say, definitive of what those are going to be. If we look um, into the current um, opportunities and development, the metaverse will be an extension of virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality technology that are already um, in use today. And especially in the in media and in the entertainment industries, uh, these technologies, um, as well as green screen, CGI's have been used for a long time. So what is the metaverse changing? I was in a metaverse conference last spring and there was a nice slide. It said, if God didn't create it, AutoCAD probably did. I, I joined this meeting from my son's gaming, let's say metaverse chair, because I'm thinking this as a good example of, of something that someone has designed using some sort of 3D software. Uh, the blueprints are somewhere within their organization, not available for us. But I think the metaverse connectedness is, is the interesting thing that somewhere these chairs in the future, it's going to be available in a way that that this webcam can recognize it and, and kind of understand where I'm sitting digitally. So the digital thing wins things is for me the interesting thing that it layers on top of reality. For media in, uh, industry, so we are doing that, that, that makes, that's the democratization part that things are available. For media industry, we have been doing CGI for a long time, and but the gaming technology giants are kind of making it easier for everyone to do studio level like CGI. And uh, I think that's the change. It's, it's, it's kind of, if you can do the virtual studio stuff on Twitch uh, with, with without any money, and it used to cost like thousands for, for studios to do, produce. So what we are now doing is we are watching the kind of the the expectation of the, uh, of the consumer to kind of change to start expecting a certain level of, of CGI or metaverse type of content. One of the real possibilities of real-time 3D, let's say on studio level or augmented reality or, or virtual reality, is that it's dynamic and, and kind of interactable in a way. So what, what I see is the big change for us is the real-time uh, easy to use nature of Mercy 3D everywhere and the expectation of consumer that changes through that. Can you share with us what ILE is actually already doing in this area? Yeah, so this is a bit different from Metaverse. So I'm going to show you a web article from New York Times Research and Development uh, Department, Reconstruction Journalist Scenes in 3D. Uh, one of our journalists came to us, I'm working for ULE Innovations, so for, to came to ULE Innovations that what can we do that is something like something similar and Kind of by accident, we also talked with Futurize about 3D at the same time. So, so it was kind of our journey. So this uh, is a web website which shows a few cases where 3D has been used uh, on online articles. This works uh, on mobile as well. I'm scrolling down the article, and as we can see, there is a 3D scene that scanned. It's not modeled, which is a big difference. Also, it's it's not like from AutoCAD because it's organic stuff that we are seeing. So we can explore a scene uh, that was uh, modeled by journalists. For us, uh, as a journalist, this was like really like awesome. Like, what's going on here? Like, how this is how this is done, and we want to do something similar or understand this better. So we started looking into. Uh, what what sort of stuff is is here involved like holistic way like the from the journalist what sort of stories they want to tell how they are like documented what sort of equipment or processes there are and how they are like uh, processed processed and published on as online articles so in in a sense of metaverse it's a kind of a different thing it's a web article but at the same time processes that are required to pull this off. They are coming from the gaming industry technologies. This sort of uh, document documentary is going to be part of the metaverse journalism. In practical levels, that's something we started to do with Futurize, and I can't yet show the results because they are not published. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, 3D 
journalism and its business mm -hmm. impact and implications for Ile you foresee? If you think about like TV journalism, it's like 16 to 9, but I think the, the, the nature of 3D is that it's special and that's, that's, that's kind of a huge difference and it's something that we don't yet understand. I think. During the process I came up with a, an, an interesting metaphor, it's a museum metaphor. If you think about the storytelling within a museum, it, there's quite a lot of information available using our like uh, <laughs> innate ways of understanding 3D spaces and we we walk, walk a journey within the museum and it's a completely different storytelling from from documentary perspective. The main problem with, with this new third dimension is that that we, when we look from the two-dimensional or website point of view, we don't see the potential, we more like see the problems. If you think about Metaverse, which is innately 3D, stuff there needs to be 3D. It's like, I'm not, I don't see Metaverse as a place where you have screens and you watch content on that. So that's kind of the big question is like, what is the special information good for and how do we tell stories within spaces? Many of the um, technology is coming and informed by the gaming industry. Will gaming innovations and internal the gaming industry become an essential partner for even the most traditional industries? Oh, I think without a doubt, I think also their talent is going to be uh, plucked from them pretty, pretty soon. Um, I mean, there's the essential nature of not only the development capability, but also the, the creative capital that exists within those, those organizations. But, you know, I think there's already talk about the requirements for organizations already start to rethink who, who they should be hiring uh, and, you know, what they should be developing internally. And therefore the key target is going to be uh, the gaming community just because of, of the nature of what's already happening, whether it be from Unreal Engine or Epic and 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 Roblox and what have you. So I think um, it it's, it makes makes a lot of sense. But it it, it also kind of goes back to something that um, Vesa was saying before. And you're asking about in terms of it's important to also think about the metaverse not as a from a technology standpoint, but also from a a lot of it is framed in terms of uh, participation. And so so the users and if you look at the increased amount of time that people are spending online in virtual worlds because of gaming, right? Um, is is huge. I think um, the figure is like from Roblox, they had uh, active users for the last couple of years move from 35 million to 150 million. And 50 million of those was during the, the, the pandemic. What that's also showing is that kind of de-stigmatizing or, or legitimizing um, this whole gaming gaming world and also having a, a life in, in this kind of virtual world. And so this is also generating um, greater importance in terms of that gaming gaming world. And so, yeah, going back to your question, I think there's going to be much closer relationships between organizations and, and having um, capability from a gamification standpoint for those reasons. In generally, the time spent, uh, even relationships will be in, in the future in inside virtual worlds. Where do you see the challenges and dangers? This, this is something that at least the, the future state that everyone is talking about, it's always on. It's all, in, all in, encompassing. How do I not participate? How do I actually get out? Um, you know, the, the, it's just one question mark when you really think about, uh, do you actually have a, have a choice moving forward? I think it's going to be really interesting. I think, you know, obviously there's the, the classic technology and governance challenges. We're going to see everything from the infrastructure that this, this metaverse is built upon and what it's able to do, the standards and protocols, the data security, sort of new rules for censorship and those types of things, but also getting people on board with these experiences and, and ramping up because the metaverse needs to be populated by folks and, and those are the ones who can be generating content to, to also consume. Um, there's also discussions at the moment whereby why are we, <laughs> the fear around spending too much time in the digital world that it kind of uh, should we say um, it becomes superior to your actual physical world and then the question marks come into what does that actually mean for for humanity um, because all the talk about in these worlds that life's much more satisfying you're richer you're more handsome you're more powerful and so therefore you you transition to that as a much more um, aspirational state so that's these these are all questions that come with it um, but at the same time I guess to challenge to that future that we, we speak about in terms of this decentralized world in you know interoperable is you know thinking about politics aside who will actually want to be the ones that actually go and create this future where where there is this, these companies working together but it's for a greater good 
it's for the greater whole without sort of exploiting consumers and going at it for 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 profit um so again these these are big questions that um will i guess unravel over the coming years and there's actually a really interesting uh, study done by uh, some Stanford researchers already in 2007. And what they actually found out that adopting a character, character digitally, people that build their character um, in a certain way actually portray um, certain characteristics back into the real life, which is called the uh, Proteus effect. Of the digital twin of our real world is kind of representing us and our real world so so when I, I mean if you think about metaverses as another place i think as a, as a layer on top of our world and we are the actors there so you are probably right and that's really interesting uh, looking at the challenges also adam just shared um have you actually faced similar challenge in the work you're doing right now at ille and have you already um solved some of those i should say that i represent the innovations and we are working a bit differently maybe as Ule. Mm -hmm. but i know like the challenge to to, to gaming using the gaming technologies that's kind of that's real and but we are learning talents is sold by the big companies making tools that are so easy to use that we can use them what are the top three tips for organizations to get started based on your experiences at Ile innovations we like to experiment. My top first tip would be that if you if you watch social media posts and there is something like this and this and metaverse this and that, click here. You should probably click here and install the app and go there and try the, try the stuff like for reals and get a get a kind of understanding of what's going on. Just not just read the what's going to happen in fifty years, but like what's 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 the thing today. And the second one is like kind of just watch YouTube stuff like how it is done and the third one is just try to do it like ex do experimentation so that's how we operate is we, we experiment a lot uh, uh without like clear uh path to production how um can companies prepare for um now in order to win in this journey towards a uh, potential metaverse Adam? I think echoing echoing what uh, Besa mentioned to start and and the experimental part definitely. But I think the other thing as well, aside from sort of understanding the technology and the the possibilities through that, is also get an understanding of communities, the the whole social dynamic of of what we're talking about in terms of the metaverse is is crucial. So, for example, get on Discord, look what's happening on Decentraland, just to to understand that dynamic because I think the the biggest mistake will be to be too naive and assume what's in the physical world is immediate sort of relatable in in this metaverse and understand that the changing dynamics that happen in in that space yeah so I, yeah Sorry. stalk the communi communities like facebook reddit discord all of them <laughs> just get a feeling here i, I think here the, the classic uh, peter drucker quote is the best right so the best way to predict the future is to create it and by actively being involved experimenting and and understanding that that's that's the the most immediate thing that can can be taken on board to start to determine what future you want as a piece of of, of this metaverse. I can actually go through the questions in the chat. We have uh, uh, Philippe or Philip. Do you think the metaverse can the real world make make the real world more interesting? What will be the interactions between uh, those? And are we heading to a matrix st a style of plugin? Yes, the real world is where we live, and that's like Ule does stories from the real world, and I think the metaverse definitely can like enhance the storytelling of the real world. For example, history. That's a really, really, really simple example of of combining this location to the historical location. How might we, if you sit in a company, start to think about inclusion and diversity because the data is kind of already biased and the algorithms are biased. So maybe how are you talking about it when you innovate? Like how might we create an even better metaverse than we, you know, the real world is kind of shifted towards favoring some people. Are you having those discussions? Yeah, that's, a, that's a super impor important question. And that's something that it's kind of, in everyday business to uh, like 
I I I know who I am. I'm I'm yeah. So so everyday business of us to think about like who we are not. Experimentation is is often like just fun and games in a way in, from that perspective. And we need to like respect that when we are th- starting to think seriously, we need to we need to include people in the process. You need to like do do effort to remember to include and we have a lot of like diversity education within the company for Finnish broadcasting open that's that's the kind of the essence to to represent everyone but that's also kind of in the innovation department in the end and Daniel is sharing there are already a multitude of channels where people can converse through an avatar this can be anything from empowering to outright dangerous when the real identity of the person is hidden do you think metaverse is heading towards a big playground idea with avatars and stuff? Or do you think there will be strong restrictions and rules aimed to make sure that everyone, uh, that everybody only acts in the space with their own identity and body? This is, you know, adding to all those questions around the challenges that the, the this kind of future state has in terms of achieving what it or its potential because ultimately what you're referring to are things like around governments and um and some form of of should we say um at least ethics at play i mean a, a big responsibility also from brands in terms of the role that they act in the metaverse and it's how how is that uh, going to be achieved when you are looking at something that is effectively and uh, decentralized um there's no sort of governing body of multiple, um, should we say, worlds of which you're transitioning through. How can you ensure that 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 there's that com- kind of common sense of uh, even security? Um, again, uh, not be able to answer the question because I think it's a, it's a huge it's a huge question that how that's going to actually play out. But it's definitely one of the challenges to this uh, metaverse really achieving that uh, that full future state. Topias are coming to mind. So the question is, in terms of regulation, what would be some sort of framework that we actually need for this, like to prevent even like brands and companies like to exploit that metaverse and like digging into people's minds, like literally. Because I'm a bit of an optimist with this, I prefer to kind of flip it on. The big piece, a big piece of this is also about demographics. And I think as uh, Vesa was also showing with his, his son's son's chair, right? I mean, um there's the coming of age of you know effectively gen z and and generation alpha where they have different expectations and behaviors on on all these different kind of social forums and formats and you know as they they're very accustomed to sort of exploring and expressing themselves in these in these environments and this generation will continue to mature and they're going to bring it with them a very different frame of reference than what we're operating under today so as an optimist i like to think that that will also enable something like this future to come about and establish should we say this kind of common common framework which is different to the one we are perhaps operating under in in our in our physical world at the moment so like we talked about this this kind of what you can do today right Uh, experimentation like research really learning a lot when i think about it i i really see like uh, immediate applications of you know the, the the development towards metaverse in for example in media we talked about 3D journalism. It make already it makes already sense. Virtual economy is getting bigger and bigger, and actually uh, shifting some of the initiatives towards the virtual uh, world uh, in retail also makes sense. Healthcare, I also see some applications in there. You know, even like doing remote surgeries and you know bringing the expertise that is not in the room to the room through the use of extended reality or in their future metaverse. These things kind of make sense to me. But when I think about like a a logistics company or a a car manufacturer what is it that they need to start doing towards metaverse and i'm not talking about you know this fully virtual thing you know but the 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 journey towards it like we talked about digital twins for example should they start 
you know, digitizing their asset already to be somehow sold, exchanged. I, I, I don't know, but the, you get my point. Or the, the community approach, should they get in there and start communities of their own? How, how do you see for these other industries where there is no straightforward link immediately? It's not like Ule's perspective, it's more mine. I, I think um, logistics is all about the metaverse because they are the kind of digital twin or layer on top of our reality. I mean, the networks are digital, the, the goods are not. But if I see, um, let's say like Uber, car on my map i think that's metaverse data is kind of the layer and the visualization that data it that brings the second layer i certainly agree with this in terms of when you think about it from networks if we go back and we think about um the year 2000 would we have imagined some of the even basic uh uses of of how we how we're interacting now with with web 2.0 with for example you mentioned uber would that have been something and that sort of business model of actually come into our frame of frame of thinking back then this is also going to uh, disrupt the nature of what we understand of of business models going forward and what it can ultimately offer we have to also have some room and space to think about what something like logistics ultimately is going to be moving forward and how organizations are going to benefit from that but um, it's imperative that we also realize that there is this transition that we have to make from not only from a time perspective but also the um from a physical reality to this uh, metaverse world. Big thank you to our two experts. Very inspiring. Thanks very much, Melanie. Thank, thank you. you all.